Welcome to the Home Team Sacramento Podcast. I'm Josh Takimoto, and today we have Sacramento High School basketball coach Matt Johnson. What's going on, coach? How's it going, man? Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. Yeah, absolutely. Before we even get started, man, before I have all my questions for you, but before we get started, uh, congrats to you guys and the section title this year and and the playoff run that you guys made. And that's uh, it's always it never gets old, right? Like that's just an exciting feeling. Anytime the playoffs come around, and I've always I've always told people too, I feel like the high school basketball playoffs in Sacramento is is probably my favorite playoffs in the area. It's just the most exciting. So, man, congrats to you guys and your team. Thank you. I appreciate it. You know, it's funny you said it never gets old, but this is my first year coaching, and then we had pretty much oh. the best. Yeah. yeah. So this was my first year, so I, I hope it never gets old because it was pretty fun. It was really exciting. Um, like you said, the playoff came. The playoffs came around. The intensity went up. Our guys really answered, um, stepped up to the calling. Um, we had a really good run. We ended up winning section, and it's just it's just a lot of fun. Um, and I'm, I'm happy to be there here. So, yeah. <laughs> I love it, man. So I have a ton of questions for you, uh, but let's just start off this way. The same question we ask everybody when they hop on the podcast for the first time. Take me back a little bit. Let me know what's your athletic background, coaching background, and how did you get to the point where you are today? Okay, good question. Um, so I played ball my whole life. I actually went to Sac I was a player at Sac I. Uh, we won a section championship there when I was a player. Um, after that, I went to Sierra College, played there for two years. Um, I got a Division One scholarship to Northern Arizona, played there for two years, um, came back to Sacramento, played in the ABA for a few for a few seasons, um, bounced around in the ABA from the Bay Area to Sacramento, um, and then finally got a break to go to China to play overseas, played in Saudi Arabia and uh, other countries in the Middle East. Um, ended up breaking my leg, so I came back home and then started my real estate business and then been doing real estate ever since. Um, my coaching background, uh, my, my story kind of intertwined. So just, I'm just all over the place, but yeah. my coaching background, um, when I was at Sac high playing basketball, I had a son. So I had a son when I was 15 years old. I had a daughter when I was 17 years old. So I graduated high school with two kids, um, pretty untraditional, but I was still able to play basketball and do all that. When I was overseas, I was missing family. You miss birthdays, you miss Christmas, you miss Thanksgiving, you miss new years, you miss, you miss all these holidays. Um, and I'm so, so I'm sitting there thinking in the hotel room in the Middle East by myself, like, is it worth it? Um, broke my leg and it gave me an opportunity to kind of transition. So I took the opportunity um, and it's been pretty cool ever since. But just going back, my son. So I was young. My son was young. I coached him his whole life. That's really my only coaching experience is coaching my son and his AAU team and all his buddies. And we, I coached them since they were little kids and they're all in college now. Um, pretty much all of them are pretty much in college all throughout the area. Um, so that was pretty much my only coaching experience, but I took that and I translated it over. Um, and I, I got a coaching job at Sierra college, which is where I played at for my same coach, John Fasano. He opened the door for me. Um, I was his assistant coach there last season. And then I sat high, needed a new coach. I applied and they, I got the job. So that's kind of my story in a nutshell, <laughs> man, in a nutshell, dude, that's a wild, that's a wild story. There's a lot of pieces to that. Yeah. Um, I could, I could probably do a whole interview just based off what you just said. Um, yeah. <laughs> man. Okay. So that's crazy too. Like that, it's crazy. The fact that you don't have like a crazy amount of coaching experience, but you have a ton of basketball experience and you have a ton right. of life experience. And so I always felt like that stuff's just as valuable as, you know, someone who has years and years of coaching. Like you're basically, I mean, you have two, you had two young kids at a young age. So I mean, that alone is a, a crazy amount of life experience that most people at your age at that time will never have and so right. how much i mean obviously you said you were still able to go and play basketball but i mean how much did that affect like how how quickly did it force you to grow up as an athlete oh. and do you feel like you were more mature at that age than some of the other guys you played with um 100 yeah 100 i've always felt like i was a little more mature than all my peers um they tend to look up to me i tend to be the leader amongst all my peers um i have natural leadership quality so it just comes all natural to me i don't know if that's from being a father so young or all the things I went through, but even before I was the, even before I had kids, I was still the captain on my basketball team. So I've always been a quote unquote leader of men. Um, sure. So it just came pretty natural to me, but I've always been a little bit mature, but you know, uh, like having kids so young, you, you have to grow up fast. Like you have to sacrifice. You have to place your life in order and see what's important. Prioritize. Um, I wasn't, I never went to a house party, I never went to a house party my whole life. I didn't smoke. I didn't drink. I didn't do any of that stuff. Um, I didn't go to prom. I didn't go to homecoming. I didn't do any of those things because after, after school, I went to practice after practice, I went home, I had to work, I had to take care of my kids. I had a lot more obligations and responsibilities than the average kid. 
Um, so I missed out on a lot of that life. But in reality, and looking back, it was actually a lot better for me because when I'm missing out on partying and I'm missing out on these social events, I'm actually gaining a lot of life skills and a lot of life tools that help me um, in the long run. So looking back, you know, my son's 19, my daughter's 17, and we've been through the journey. Um, so looking back, I wouldn't change anything for the world. And it, it's just been a blessing. It's been so amazing. And I'm here for the ride. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Now, I know sometimes when when you have a young, a young athlete, especially at like the high school age, if there's any kind of massive life change, whether it be, you know, having a kid, maybe a parent passes away, maybe there's some kind of major injury, sometimes it jeopardizes the the dream of pursuing whatever sport they're competing in. Was that ever the case for you? Was ever was the, the idea and the dream of pursuing basketball ever in jeopardy? Or did you ever say, hey, I'm just not going to do this? Like, what was that whole thing like? Um, I mean, without getting too into my personal life, like my, sure, my girlfriend sure. got pregnant. Yeah, my girlfriend got pregnant. And then um, I didn't know what I was going to do. I went to my mom and I went to my basketball coach, which was Derek Swafford and Earl Allen at the time, um, who are legends in the Sacramento area. Yeah. Um, so I went to all three of them, basically. And basically all three of them said the same thing to me. And, and that is, we're going to support you. We have your back. Um, you can do this. You know what I mean? In short, um, my mom made a deal with me, which is funny. I don't tell a lot of people this story, but my mom made a deal with me. And I told her I was going to quit. I said, mom, I'm going to quit basketball and I'm going to go get a job. I got to be a man, 15 year old, 16 year old kid. I'm like, I gotta, I gotta go and I gotta take care of my family. Um, I had these kids, I'm gonna raise these kids. This has always been my mindset. Um, sure. I had these kids, raise these kids. Uh, I gotta do what I gotta do. And my mom made a deal with me. She said, as long as you're playing basketball and you're going to school, I'll handle the financial hardship. I'll handle the financial burden. I just need you to focus on your grades and focus on your school. That's your wow. job from now on out. Yeah, yeah. She's like, you just do that and I'll handle the other things and then we'll teamwork it. And once I heard that, I was like, oh, this is my job. I'm all in. So yeah. my grades skyrocketed, my basketball skyrocketed. Like literally, if I wasn't in the gym, I was with my family, with my kids and my mom. And then on the other side, my mom did a really good job of teaching me how to be a parent um, because, you know, the kids wake up at four o'clock in the morning, five o'clock in the morning, crying. <laughs> my son's out there crying. I got to I had a, I got a test at 8 a.m. tomorrow. I got a game tomorrow. Um, I got all these lives hitting on me. I just need my rest. Um, my mom makes me get up at five o'clock in the morning to go get my kid, but she's right there with me. She mm. shows me how to make the bottle. She shows me how to hold my son. She shows me the things that has to be. So I'm not alone. I don't feel that pressure and that burden of all this overwhelming me because I got my mom's with me, but also she's teaching me and she's making sure I do it myself. Sure. Um, yeah. So just, it, it takes a village and I just had a lot of support around me. Um, I never did anything alone. Um, and, and that's how I kind of made it through everything I've been through. Yeah. Man, I'm, t I'm telling you right now, we have my wife and I have two, uh, two young girls. And uh, so we're not we're not too far removed from those those days where you know, you're waking up in the middle of the night and feeding the baby and walking the baby around. And man, I'm just trying to picture I, we we had both of our kids in our 30s. Okay, and so I'm trying to put my myself in, in a young kids like a high schooler shoes having to do that same thing. And I can't even imagine what that would have been like. But it's, uh, it's awesome that your mom was right there with you, you know, showing you how to do it the whole time and not just leaving you hanging. You know, what I mean, Right. Yeah. I, I'm very grateful. And people ask me how I did it all the time. I don't know. I don't know how I did it. You just go yeah. through most, just do it. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. I, can, I don't think I can do it now as a 35 year old man, the things I did as a 15, 16 year old boy. Yeah. But <laughs> just go and you just do it. Uh, man, that's amazing. Well, you know, I thought it was cool too, as you were telling that story, you're like, man, when I, when I found the news, I talked to my mom first and then I talked to my coaches. And that's been one of the things on this podcast is where, you know, we, this, our primary audience is high school coaches and athletes, but really high school coaches. And we always tell people, it's like, Hey, we, we all want to win. We're competitive, but you're also teaching these life lessons that are, that are going to help these athletes beyond the field or beyond the court. And one of the things is just being there and showing up for them is going to speak, you know, uh, it's going to speak so highly of you as a coach to these athletes. And so the fact that the first, you know, first three people you went to two of the three, were your coaches, I think speaks pretty highly of, of them and the role they play in your life. For sure. Like, um, I didn't have a dad growing up, you know what I mean? So my high school coach became my mentor. He became my, and I don't know if you know Derek Swafford, but he's still my, name. yeah, he's still my role model to this day. He coached at Sakai before me for 20 years. He won many, many championships. And people ask me like, Matt, you're doing so great. You're having success. What are you doing? I'm like, I'm not doing anything new. I'm doing the same thing that Derek Swafford showed me. We were in the same programs. We do the same weights. We do the same conditioning. Um, we do the same drills because it works. It has success at this level. Um, so I'm not reinventing the wheel. I'm just, I'm keeping it going and I'm sharpening it up a little bit. Um, and that all comes from them. That comes from, and, and that goes off the court too. 
he was a great leader of men. He was a great mentor. He, he made sure we got our school and he made sure we did things the right way to get us ready for the real world, to get us ready for life, to get us ready for college. Um, he didn't care about high school. He didn't care about what the moment we're in right now. He always cared about the next step and getting us ready for there and getting us ready for the real world as life as we're inner city school, you know, as young black men he, um, to get us ready for that. And he did a great, amazing job of it. Um, and I'm just trying to carry that torch. Yeah. And did he, now I'm not as I'm not uh, real familiar with the history and the coaching history of Sac High. Did you take over for him, or was there another a couple other coaches between you and him? There was a couple other coaches between me and him. Okay. Um, I, I didn't. I, I wasn't even thinking about coaching when I was younger. I was just trying to raise my kids, raise my family. Um, once my son graduated from high school, I had all this free time because all those kids are in college now, and I was like, sure. oh, what do I do? Um, so there's a few other coaches in between there. Um, um, the program was kind of like a little bit lumpy. wasn't what they weren't sure. having the greatest success. Uh, but now I, I took over, and everybody's saying we're going in the right direction, which which is good to hear. Yeah. Hey, hey, man, it seems like it. You have a banner to show for it, so it seems yeah. like you're going yeah. in the right direction. <laughs> <laughs> so, so let me ask you this: like I told you when I sent you the DM, man, and explained, you know, what this podcast is about. Obviously, it's called Home Team, and our whole, I, you know, the whole concept behind that is we want to invest into our home team of Sacramento and the surrounding areas. And I always love it when we have a coach come on that played for the same school that they're now coaching at, because it, there's, it's a special thing. Anytime I've had a chance to go speak to an athletic team at my old high school, or I've had a chance to go visit at my old high school, it just, it feels different when you walk on there versus other places. Not that other places aren't great. There's just a special connection there. So walk me through it, man. When you first got the job as the head coach at the, at the same court you played on, like, what was that feeling like? Was it surreal? Was it exciting? Was it, were you nervous? Like, what was the feeling like when you walked onto the, onto the campus for the first time? It's still surreal. Like, yeah. everything, like it still feels like I'm dreaming. Like, everything that's going on, people are like, you won the championship your first year. I'm like, really? Oh, wow. It's, it's, yeah. it, it still doesn't feel real. Like, I still walk into the gym, especially the empty gym feeling. You know, you walk into the gym, you turn the light, the first one in there. That empty gym feeling, it's still like, it humbles me. It overwhelms me. Um, it, it's a lot of feelings and emotions that come along with it. Um, but I wouldn't want to be anywhere else in the world. It was never my goal or ambition to coach high school. Um, I wouldn't coach any other high school in the world. I would only coach at Sac High. I wanted to coach Division One. I. I wanted to coach college. I was already on that path. I was out of college. I wanted to propel from that college. Um, but this opportunity just came up, and it was – I'm a religious man. I just felt like it was really God sent for me to yeah. be here at this time, at this place, at this opportunity, and it all just kind of comes together. Um, and I try to, like, follow my blessing, so to speak. Um, and it's just like – it's just – I don't know. It's, it's a surreal feeling. It's still, it's like, I, I think I described it. It's surreal. It's humbling and it's overwhelming. And, and you have a lot of pressure, a lot of eyes, but a lot of support and a lot of love. So as long as you, and I, I put on all my posts, I said, I promise to the community, I'm going to give this job my all. I'm going to pour my heart and soul into this job. And I feel like I did. And the community responded, the boys responded and they all rallied around us. And it was kind of like a nice little, perfect little mesh, perfect little puzzle of things that come around because um, in the past, the school and the community, they had like a disconnect. Sure. Um, but I'm, you know, I'm from that community. I know all those same people. I have a long history. I'm one of the, I'm one of the alumni who keep all the other alumni together, you know, whether it be open gyms or something like that. So like, I feel like I, I feel like I was the perfect man to bridge that gap between the community and the school. And I feel like that's one of my pillars that I focused on. And I feel like we were able to achieve that as well. Man, you're just doing this interview for me. That was one of the questions I had for you too. Was, <laughs> you know, the community aspect of the event because it's, it's such a huge, it's such a huge piece of high school sports for me. I always felt like that was a big deal, and I love, you know, anytime Joe Davidson or you know someone posts an article saying, "Hey, this this athletic program did this for the community," yeah. during Christmas time, Thanksgiving time, just you know, anytime during the year, it's just an amazing thing because when you know when people see the you know the sack high hoodie or they see the sack high hat or the shorts or the shirt. Like that means something to the community and people recognize that. And then, you know, the better your, your reputation is as a program, the more highly and the more supportive the community is of what you're doing. So like you said, it is a, a back and forth thing, but especially with you being from the community, like I imagine that's got to play, it's got to be cool for your athletes to see that. Because I remember I knew someone that was doing a lot of work in Oak Park and they always made it a, a point of bringing back kids that, you know, went away to college and bringing them back into these, into these different programs and say, Hey, they lived on the same street that you lived on. They were going to the same elementary school, the same high school that you went to. But now look what they're doing. It was, it was like this really cool example for them. It's not just some random person. It's like, this is the same person that knows where I'm coming from. So 
What's that interaction like between you and your players, them knowing that, hey, I'm actually from the same community that you guys are currently living in? Yeah, um, well, I'm, I'm from that community. I'm a little bit younger, too. I'm 35 years old. I don't know how sure. much the other, how old the other head coaches are, but my staff and I are all younger, so we relate. We listen to the same music still. Sure. You know what I mean? So we yeah, all yeah. We relate pretty well. Um, but also, um, I'm able to get on the court and still play. We still have open gyms. I still lace them up. I still go out there and I bust the kids up a little bit and show them I still got it. Hey, there I'm, you go. My other coaching staff, too. Uh, my other coaches, we have, what, three guys that played overseas that are still in, in shape. We have five guys that played in college. Um, so we have a pretty good coaching staff as well. And we usually tend to win when we play against the team. Um, so just that level of, yeah. just that level of respect, like being able to get on the court and show them, like, I know what I'm talking about on the, on the education side, I can show you on the hoop side. And then also they hear it too, from the community, from everybody else. And they see it. Um, they see that I left, they see, they see my banners on the wall. They see all that stuff. Um, so it just gives me an extra level of credibility, an extra level of respect, especially being a first year coach. I need all those little nuggets of, of help. Um, and I feel like I was just getting them from everywhere. Um, and and it, it really just comes down to the relationships with, with the boys and I and for them to be able to. It's just like business. You know, you do business with people you know and you trust. So for the boys to be able to trust me, to see me, to know me, like I said, I'm an open book. I'm an open book with my kid with the boys, too. I had them at my house, um, pizza nights. Uh, all that good stuff, movie night, pizza nights. Um, and I let them know and I show them I opened up my life. I opened up myself to them and and respond. They played hard for me and loved me and respected me. So I feel like it's a two way street. I never want to be one of those coaches like do it my way. Or, rah, 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 rah. Nah, like this is the family. You know what I mean? Let's figure yeah. out how we're going to roll with this family because I need all you guys here. And you guys need me here and there ain't no way around it. So let's let's all get on the same page and move towards our common goal, um, which we're able to do. But but if I come in right away and don't have all that other I call them nuggets. You know, if yeah. I don't have all these other things, then it would be harder for it going one ear out the other. It'd be harder for the boys to buy in. Um, so I think all those help for them to buy in for sure. No, man, I, I love all that. And I do love the, that team building, that team, that family feel. I feel like all the best teams have that, that feeling, you know, they have that camaraderie, they have that, that close knit feeling. And it, and it shows like, I think sometimes there, I've, I've heard some coaches, I feel kind of dismiss that. It's like, you know, we're going to focus on the X's and O's. It's like, right. that's cool. But I always feel like the best teams that I've talked to always have that, that sense of community and that sense of family within, within their team. And I think that's an amazing thing, man. Um, I also like the fact that you're able to flex on them, flex on them a little bit, yeah. both with the play, you guys can compete against them and you can point at the Raptors too, with the banners. What better was better than that? But you know what's funny? We had an ongoing joke. Every day I'm coming out, I point to the banners. Like, I got three of them up there. Like, those are my banners hanging up. Ooh. But now the <laughs> players, especially my sophomore, uh, Samarius, we call him Dada, my sophomore, he has two more years with us. So now he has a banner. So now every time I point to my banner, he's going to point to his banner. Oh. Like, yeah. <laughs> so he's like, Coach, I'm a champion too. You can't point to your banner anymore. Um, but I'm still going to point. Yeah. <laughs> Man, that's fun. That's that's always a cool thing, man. When you can you can have that rapport with your athletes and joke around with them, and then they, like it's, like you said, they compete hard for you yeah. for all those reasons. Especially when you're willing to share your own personal life with them, because I think some people want it to be two separate things, right? Like, hey, when we're on the field, it's one thing; off the field, it's a completely different. And I think you know, again, I feel like the most successful coaches and the ones who relate best to the players are the ones who are like, hey, you're with me all the time. If I see you in the community. You're my, you're my, you're one of my athletes if on the field you are the court field. You're one of my athletes. And so, um, man, I just love that you're doing all that. And it makes sense why you're, you know, you're having the success that you did this year because, you know, for all of those different reasons, I'm curious though. So you have a, I mean, it sounds like you have a really impressive coaching staff. How much, how much time, cause I'm always, I'm always fascinated by when coaches choose who they surround. Cause I mean, when you're choosing these people, it's like, you're choosing not, you're not babysitting. It's almost like you're choosing a babysitter for your kids. It's like you have to really be careful who you're picking because these people are going to have a, a tremendous amount of influence on these athletes that you're responsible for. And so you can't just pick someone because they have, you know, a crazy resume. You can't just pick someone because they're your buddy. Like you have to really put a lot of time and effort into, hey, who am I going to bring into our family to influence these kids? So what's that process like for you? Or what was that process like for you as you were choosing these guys? Um, well, I did. I did what you said. I did the latter. I hired my buddies. I hired my friends. Um, okay, but I didn't just hire my friends. I sure. hired my friends. I hired my teammates at Sac High. So they played sure. with me at Sac High. They won champions with me. They went on to college. They have coaching experience. So I just all brought them back. I kind of just brought them back home. And these are like some of my best friends for 20 plus years. Um, so outside of basketball, like we played basketball together, but these are my best friends outside of basketball. We hang out all the time still to this day. 
Um, so, and they're, they're, they're my rock. They're my support. I leaned on them so much throughout this year with all my doubts, with all my, my pressures, with everything going on in my head. They were able to just be there and calm me down and give me confidence and reassure me. Um, so I, I had my two best friends with me on my coaching staff, which, which is amazing. And I had a couple other buddies with me as well. Um, I, I, I carried over one guy. So there was one guy on the staff from last year. Um, I kept him on board just for relationship. Well, not just for relationship purposes, but to help bridge that gap between the old regime and the new regime. Um, I want, he was a familiar face. He knew all the That's players. Right. He knew all, yeah, he had all the keys to the doors. I didn't have any keys at first. He had everything. <laughs> you know what I mean? So yeah, I kept him on board. Um, but he's also a great basketball mind. He played as well. He still plays. Um, but at first, like, honestly, at first I kept him on board just for that relationship part, but he blew me away with his basketball mind and his, his loyalty and his dedication to the program. Even though he came from the other staff, he, he showed me um, everything I needed to see. Um, and then, and then another guy who was a teacher at the school who played overseas um, and went to Providence, you know, played at Providence and then played overseas. Um, I'm like, yeah, you can come join the staff as well. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Um, it was kind of a, I, I got my best friends in the mix of a couple other people. And then it kind of just came together pretty nice. Yeah. I like that. But see, so I can take back what I said. So some people would hire their buddies just because they're their buddies and they have no qualifications. Yeah. That's a good, that's a good life lesson. See, coach surrounds himself with dope people and then they can also coach and it benefits them on yeah. the court too. So that's the way to do it. That's how everybody should be doing it. Surround yourself with awesome people and it's going to benefit you in more ways than more ways than one. Right. Yep. Yeah. I agree. And there's, a, there's ups and downs, like, cause, because they're my best friends, we butt heads. And then one sure. time the admin came to me, and was like, you guys fight too much on the sidelines. And I was going to say something, but then I realized that's just the way you guys communicate to each right. other. Because we're passionate, you know, we're, we're fired up in the game. I'm like, no, I don't want to put that sub in. What are you doing? He's like, I want this to write something. Right. Going back and forth. And it looks like we're going crazy, but that's the way we communicate on a Sunday watching the Raiders game. You know what I mean? That's the same way we communicate watching the Kings game. Like, that's just how we are. And we don't take it personal. We're able to get through it, but. Right. Sometimes outside looking in, it looked it looked kind of bad. <laughs> it, it, that is that's funny, man. It is funny too because you can tell who's who's been in the sports world for a long time because they see that as like there's there's talking things out. What's the yeah, big deal? Right. And other people, other people are like, is there a, fight, a fight's about to break out? What's what's going right. on here? Because they're like, oh, you're not used to the sports thing as much. That's just a normal conversation between good friends in a competitive exactly. arena. Um, let me ask you this, man. Who's your favorite all time basketball player? Oh man. And it, it, it breaks my heart to say it, and I'm not just saying it because he passed away, but it's Kobe Bryant. I grew up watching him. I'm a diehard Kings fan, but Kobe Bryant, I had a poster of him since I was a little kid. When I was 17 years old, I had a poster of him on my wall, um, and I've watched his whole career. And you want to talk about somebody who dedicated their life to the game, is a student of the game, and mm -hmm. really, like, mastered his craft. Um, I respect that so much to the core. Kobe Bryant was the best player coming in. He made himself one of the best players. Um, and I just got to watch his whole career, so just – just that he's hands head and shoulders just above like the mama mentality, that whole mindset. Um, you can't get away from that. Um, and just what he brought to the game and everything like that is just, and be a, being a little kid and seeing his whole journey, like I've seen LeBron James whole journey as well. And I have high respect for him, but he, to me, he's not a Kobe Bryant in my opinion. They're two different beasts. You know what I mean? Sure. Yeah. And I just respect Kobe so much. And I just, I hate him, but I love him because he's on the Lakers and I'm a Kings. So I always <laughs> rooted against them, but you have so much respect when you watch him drop 45 on your team. You know what I mean? To knock sure. him off the playoffs, stuff like that. Like, <laughs> yeah. you got to love that guy. Yeah. Oh, dude, 100%. How you feel? How you feel? I mean, the Kings are having, I'm not going to lie. I've, I've told people this before. I'm not a, I'm, I, I enjoy basketball. I, I follow basketball, but I can't, I can't say that I'm a huge Kings fan. I, I've been following, but obviously you're a diehard Kings fan. If you guys are just listening and not watching this episode, you got the the Kings uh, banner over, his over Coach's shoulder. And it looks like the, is it a sack high hoodie or is it a King's hoodie right now? Sack high hoodie. Sack high, sack high hoodie. hoodie. Okay. So I, mean, I wear purple every day now. Like yes. I've always wore, like I always wore, I've always wrote my King um, even before we got good. You know, I bleed purple, King's purple and sack high purple. But now literally every day I wear purple, whether it's See? sack high or whether it's King's and I love it. Yeah. It makes sense. So how, how are you feeling about the team this year? I mean, it's obviously a lot of fun. I love it. Yeah. I love it. I go to, the, I go to games often, like just the energy in the community. Um, mm -hmm. rallying around the team and I told everybody they're like we don't want those bandwagon fans yes I do come on come join the bandwagon come on <laughs> we're gonna be in the playoffs come join the playoffs let's, let's get it crazy downtown um I'm all for it I'm here I'm all, I'm all for it all I love to light the beam I loved when um um I forget his name now but they were like the scores are here I love that little catch line I love the sure. catch phrase I love all of it it just brings energy to the games the community the team yeah. plays hard mike brown's done an amazing job like he's coach of the year in my opinion just yeah. turning guys around um 100%. The, uh, 
the um, Sabonis trade I, for Halliburton. I was skeptical at first, but I knew Sabonis would fit the mold that we needed, and, and they're doing it. Fox and the Ox are playing great together. Um, great draft pick this year. I just feel like they're getting more stable. They're heading in the right direction. They seem to like each other. They seem to like playing for each other. They seem to like playing for Mike Brown. And this is a, it's a pretty good team. It's a pretty good team. I don't want to say we can be a champion yet, but it's a pretty good team. Like I said, man, it's it's fun. It's fun to watch. And I, I I was telling someone this other day. It is cool that when you're watching one of the Kings games and they do the you know the outside shot of the stadium or of the arena, you can you can just tell from even from the TV. There's a different energy around the city, around the area, surrounding the team. So, man, I I love seeing it. Now let me ask you this: as a coach, is it weird? Is it hard watching? Is it not hard? Is it weird watching games now as a coach because i mean you've played the game your entire life and you see the the game one way but like when you're watching a king's game now as a coach and for the last couple of years as you've coached is it does it change your perspective or do you still watch it the same way as you used to as a fan um that well uh, that's funny uh, i always felt like i had a coach's brain i always felt like sure. and no offense to any of my peers or anybody else but i always felt a little more cerebral when it came to the basketball side of things sure. um, even as a player I, I, that was that was one of my greatest strengths i wasn't the fastest i didn't jump the highest i'm not the tallest i don't shoot the best i was a cerebral player i knew if i stood here and the play goes here that i can intercept the pass before it gets there or whatnot sure. um so i feel like i've always watched basketball through the same lens and i feel like it's always kind of been a coach's lens it's always even as a player um i've always kind of had that lens um so i just feel like it's just it's just sharpening now everything's just getting sharpened so i see things i see things that i haven't seen before i see things that i missed when i was younger that i see now um i understand the game a little bit better um but i told i tell my peers and i tell my friends like i feel like i coach better than i do anything else in the whole world i feel like i coach better than i'm even a dad which says a lot you know what i mean but i'm, I'm a better coach than i was a player um, just because it just comes so natural to me. Just like you're saying, oh, all the good coaches do this. I didn't read any books. I just do what I feel is right, just following my heart. And I guess I'm doing the right things. You know what I mean? Um, it just comes so natural and it just flows. Um, so and I've always felt like it was in me to answer the question. Yeah. 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 Is there a is there a player, um, like a current active player that and maybe a couple of players that when you're talking to your guys, you point to this this player saying, Hey, this is the if you're gonna watch anybody watch this person play because they they do it the right way the fundamentals their mentality all of that is there are there a couple of guys that you point to well it's funny because i do i point to steph curry obviously but not sure. because he threes like i because sure. he's kind of like and i don't I, I i definitely tell them no step back threes no deep threes but if you watch us play they still shoot those all the time when they make them um but <laughs> I, I just I just talk about his work ethic. I talk about how he trains. Yeah. I'm like, watch a Steph Curry shooting drill before the game and see how hard and intense he's going. And it's, it's like, oh, it's totally focused. And he doesn't miss a shot in his warm ups and his training. So it's like, the, just pay attention to his attention to detail. Pay attention to how hard he goes. Pay attention to how serious he is. Those are all game speed shots, and that's the reason why he can translate it directly to the game. He goes from warm ups, hits those shots. He goes to the game and hits those shots because it's no, it's the same exact shot. It's the same exact routine every time. Like. He's a professional by every sense of the word. He takes care of his body. He, he eats right. He, he does the things he needs to do. Um, so I definitely point to him. But then also, like, the way he plays. I think I feel like he plays the right way. For him to be a sharpshooter, sniper, point guard, MVP guy, he shares the ball with his teammates. He uses his teammates. He runs off screens. He's constantly moving. I'm like, look how much Steph runs in the game. Like, you have to get in shape to run like that. Um, and so I point to him. But then I also point to guys like Ray Allen, old school Ray Allen, old oh, school yeah. Rick. And I tell them to go watch those guys. Go watch old school Rip Hamilton. Just because I, I, I'm trying to teach, I was trying to teach my team to share the ball and move without the ball. So I was really, I really pointed to those players. Um, and I, I love those players. Those are the guys that I look up to when I play because I was a shooter coming off the screen too. So I guess it kind of correlates. Sure. But, yeah, yeah. But <laughs> okay. definitely those guys. Yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. That's just always, I mean, I feel like every coach has those guys that they watch, you know, at the professional level and they always use them as examples. And it's nice that you have guys like that you can point to. Yeah. And that, you know, it's like, I mean, Steph, I mean, Steph's one of the best in the world, you know? Right. And so it's just another example. Obviously they're listening to, to, they're listening to what you and your coaches are saying, but just that little extra, you know, example that you can put out there. It's like, Hey, like you can't argue with him. It's, right. he's the best in the world at what he does like just watch what he does and follow his example which is pretty cool right um, but real, real quick, also but I, tell yeah, please. Them, I, I tend to lead towards i say i tell him to watch college basketball i tell him to go watch college basketball not just the highlights i tell him to sit down and go watch a full game of college basketball listen to the announcers hear what they say um we just had university of arizona come practice in our gym today and i invited all the boys to come watch and they were there they showed up and just watching a division one practice getting ready for into the tournament game the next day 
you can see the level of like just the level of professionalism that takes place there, you know? Um, so I always encourage my boys to watch college, whether it be Sac State, UC Davis, or Duke for North Carolina, like watch the college game. Um, because that's more, that's number one, that's where you try to get to. Number two, that game emulates our game a little bit more because we're not out there doing step back three, shooting half court shots. We're playing a more fundamental game. Um, so I, I really pushed the college game onto them. Yeah, well, there's always a, a that level of hunger there too, right? Because they're oh, they're still yeah. trying to make it to that next level, and so, I mean, they're putting everything they have into it. Not that the professionals aren't, but I mean, there's a, there's a different you know mentality yeah. once you get to that professional level. Nice. Um, so that's smart, man. I, I like that having them watch the college the college level games. Now let me ask you this: I just filled out my bracket. Who's going to win the whole tournament? Because I I may need to change some things. I still have time. <laughs> well, okay, I got. My, my, my choice, if I, I'm, I'm not a betting man, but if I was a betting man, I'd go with Alabama. Um, I just love their defensive tenacity. They play so hard. I feel like they're battle-tested. They're well-coached. They've been through it. Um, and I think they got star power as well. But um, I filled out two brackets. So one, I picked Alabama. And then the other one, I picked Purdue. Just because that big man, he's getting 34 and 15, the seven-foot-two guy, and nobody can yeah. stop him. Like, that translates in a tournament game. You know what sure. I mean? Sure. Um, so I got Purdue and Alabama winning it. I like UCLA, but they face a lot of injuries. We'll see how they overcome. A lot of people are picking Duke as their sleepers. I don't, I don't see it. Um, okay. Yeah. So that, yeah, that, that's, that's my thoughts. Yeah. All right. I mean, I changed some things. I'm but, not going to lie. I don't so follow busy. it. Yeah, go ahead. I'm so busy during this college basketball season. I barely watched any games. I was so focused on our, our stuff and watching film and scouting my opponents. Like sure. once our season ended, I finally started watching some games. So I'm not the best expert. You know, I'm not Joe Lenardi. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Hey man, you're still better than me. I was, I always have a tough time in these brackets every year. Cause I don't follow college basketball until March madness. Right. And so uh, I had my daughters help me and I'm right. like, you know, <laughs> they're basing it off the mascot. I'm like, ah, Sometimes I'm like, I don't know about, I don't know if I feel good with that choice. We have to adjust it a little colors, bit. Right, which colors they like better? Like, well, I like. Uh. <laughs> yeah, it's like I, I like this animal over that animal, that color right. or this color. Like, oh, okay, so I may make some adjustments. We'll see. Like I said, I haven't told tomorrow, right? Tip off right. tomorrow. So, yep. Yep. yeah, that's always that was always a fun time when I was at Sac uh, Sac State. That was always a fun time when you were in class, especially if you were in a class with a lot of athletes. I mean, you just saw one of these, like the phones kind of like behind the textbook, (laughs) like five or six games going on at the same time. It was, it was, it was not bad. It was was a fun time for sure. (laughs) Those those first few days, those Thursday, Friday games, those are the best. Those games all day, nonstop, like four different channels going. Yeah. Well, you always have like the major upsets, right? The the major upsets that happen on those. Yeah. It's a wild, a wild time. So we'll see. We'll see how it goes for me. I'm not, I've never done great in it, but fingers crossed this year. We got, we got something good. Um, so let me ask you this. This is a question I like asking coaches. I'm, in, I'm really interested in your answer. Um, so obviously this, this is called home team. And like I mentioned before, and our tagline is, you know, even though we wear different jerseys, we're still all a part of this home team. And so, you know, we, you know, if you ever, if you're a coach, if you're an athlete, who's trying to make their community better, if you want to make your athletes better, if you're trying to have a positive impact on the lives of your athletes, like we're all doing the same thing, right? Like we all want to, ha- we all want to do that, but at the end of the day, we're all competitors. And whenever you play against another team in the city, you want to beat that team. Like we, we want to win, even though we are a part of the same team. That being said, who is a who is a coach? Uh, let me do let me let me do kind of two parts of this. When you were playing, who is a who is a guy that you really enjoyed competing against? Who you just had a lot of respect for and felt like, man, this is always a lot a tough competition. But I love competing against this guy because I feel like he brings the best out of me. And then on the flip side, as a coach, which teams do you, or coach do you enjoy competing against for the very same reason? Like they bring the best out of my guys and they also bring the best out of me as a coach. Oh, sorry. So uh, clarify the first part of the question was a player or a coach. When I was a player, what player challenged me the most? Yeah. So when you were, when you were in your playing days, uh, who was a guy that you enjoyed competing against? And then the second part of it as a coach now, who is a, who's another coach or maybe another program that you enjoy competing against? Because nice. you know okay. that they're going to bring the, the best out of your guys. Nice. Well, as a player, um, and it's a weird question, and I, I'm not a homer at all, but the best player I ever played against is the, was my teammate uh, at Sac High, Kevin Galloway. Um, he was the oh. best player I played against. Yeah. yeah. And I played against a lot. I played against NBA guys. I just think Kevin's better than him. Maybe I'm a homer. He's one of my best friends, so maybe whatever. But we battled every day in practice. We battled 
every day in practice and iron sharpens iron. I made him better. He made me better. We just went after it. And some of the things we used to do to each other, some of the things he used to do to me, like we're high school kids and other guys, grown professional men didn't do those same things he used to do to me on the basketball court. And we're 15, 16 year old kids, not even knowing what we're doing, but just his skill was just through the world. He's a six, seven point guard, averaged a triple double his junior year, my senior year, he averaged a triple double, averaged 15 assists a game. Most of them were to me. Um, and it was just like, He's he was hands he's still hands down the best player I ever played with or played against. So he definitely um, I give him my kudos. He played overseas. He he had a great career. Um, and then the coach, um, I would say because I was going to answer that question a different way. But if you ask me the coach back in the day, it's the same coach today. It's one of the same coaches. It's Coach Hibbs. He used to coach at Foothill. Okay. Um, now he's over at Wood Creek. Um, we only lost a few games this year, and I feel like I've only been out coached a few games this year. Yeah. And um, Kibbs definitely outcoached me. He's a great coach. He's a state champion back in the day. Um, and he outcoached me in that Wood Creek game. I hate it. Cost us. Cost <laughs> us. It, it, it's still, that's, that's one of them that still burn. It's just that um, one. And he's a legend. You know, he's a legend. So I, I wouldn't expect anything less. But then also um, Mike Lorente over at Capital Christian. Yeah. Um, he's a really good friend of mine, really good buddy. I respect him so much. He, he, has, he runs a great program. He's top notch. He's just top notch in everything. He's top notch in the way he handles himself, the way he carries himself, the way he handles his family, the man, wife, uh, husband, um, uh, faith, um, coach. He just does everything the right way. Um, so I definitely lean on him and get a lot of advice from him. Um, and he's in our league, so it's funny. And he, and, and we, we joke about it all the time because we play each other two times a year, so we joke about it all the time. Like, yeah, I'll give you advice. You can be buddies, but, but except for on game day. <laughs> but after the game, we can go back to being yeah. friends and shake hands and, and all that. Um, yeah. So, yeah, like, it, but he's like a mentor slash rival. It's a weird relationship. Sure. Um, yeah, but I, I look up to him for sure and respect him a lot. I like that, though. I, like, uh, that's why I asked the questions. I feel like that's what it is for a lot of coaches that answer that question. It's like, I hate losing to that dude. But at the same time, like I respect him so much, or I respect her so much. You know, it's just like it's it's a fun, it is a fun dichotomy. It's like, how does this how does this whole thing work? You know what I mean? It's like a right. a yeah. very interesting, interesting thing. He calls me, he calls me, I see his phone. I'm like, ah, what does Mike want? And I answer yeah. it and we're buddies and we're talking, you know what I mean? But it's like it's those weird mix of emotions. Sure. Like, I don't like you, but I like you and I don't I respect you and I right. love you, you know. <laughs> right. <laughs> so going back to the foothill coach. So he was a coach when you were playing. Okay, so now what was that like? That must have been a, a bizarre feeling when you first stepped onto the court that day where it's like, okay, I used to be a player competing against his athletes. Now I'm a coach competing against his athletes or competing against him with his athletes. Like, what was that whole thing like the first time you coached against him? Well, it's happened It's happened a few times. Um, I like the Rio Americano coach, I, I played against him and coached against him now too. Um, so it's happened a few times already just in my first year. So it's always, sure. it's a weird, like, full circle, like one of those humbling, surreal moments. Cause sure. I, used to, I used to bust all those guys back when I was a player, you know what I mean? Um, but <laughs> yeah. now as a coach, now, now I step into like their realm, you know what I mean? I'm the new guy in their er element. Um, and I'm kind of out of my element now. Sure. Um, and this is the expertise. So it's, it's, this is different dynamic. Um, I don't want to say, I don't want to say like I'm intimidated or scared or anything like that, but I definitely know, like I have to bring my A game. Like I can't make any mistakes. Like I have to be sharp. I have to, I get a good night's sleep before we play those guys the night before. You know what I mean? Sure. Like I have to, I have to be sharp as well and on, on, on mine. Um, and then like just what coaching is so different than being a player because like coaching, like if I'm going against a big game or a big opponent, I don't want to overcoach. I don't want to, I don't want to do too much. You know what I mean? Like just do what God is here. Do, do be who we are. I don't want to, because like we've had a lot of big games this year and I'm like, I get nervous and intensity's ramped up. The media's there. The fans are there. And I just tell the boys, like, it's, it's just basketball. You know what I mean? Like, let's just do it. I kind of, like, bring it down. I don't want to go in there and ch changing things and doing things we don't do just because we're playing against a legend legend coach. Like, no, we're just going to do what we do as well. They're going to do what they do, and let's see who the better team is today. Um, so I try to – because if anything, I tell myself to, like, calm down. You know what I mean? Like, don't do too much against those top legend coaches. I don't need to overcoach. I don't need to try to outcoach them. It's not about me and them, X's and O's. Not, and like Because if we get into that game, I'm going to lose that game. Mm -hmm. um but but let's play basketball and let's see whose athletes are better or let's see who shoots better this day you know what i mean and we can win those games um but if i get to the x's and o's coaching battle with guys who've been doing it for 30 years and won state championships i'm not gonna win that game <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah so not interesting yet. that's interesting that's a that's an interesting interesting perspective i, I would have never uh would have thought about but i is it is it difficult 
because especially at the high school level, obviously you have some incredibly talented. I mean, I, like I said, I've been to plenty of uh, state championship games, section championship games. I mean, I look out there and I'm like, some of these teams have grown men on their team as high schoolers. It's it's a wild thing. But is it is it hard as a coach not to? Because I mean, they're still kids. Is it hard not to overcoach? I mean, even if it's not like not like a big game, because I imagine there there could be a, a a temptation there because you know if you're not seeing things go the right way, you want to step in there. But like, how? I mean, obviously you kind of alluded to it a little bit. But like, how difficult is that to not overcoach? Um, I think well for me, like I said, I I, I have a I prepare mentally for it. You know what I mean? Because I know I I'm I'm real big on. Uh, mental preparation. I foresee a lot of things. I lay in bed and I mentally prepare for a lot of things. I, I see how the game's going to outplay in a bunch of different scenarios, just so I can prepare myself and put myself in those situations. I did it as a player too. I do it as a coach too. Um, so I'm pretty good at handling the moment and being calm. Uh, the biggest thing I struggled with this year as a coach, hands down by far, were the referees. Um, mm. I probably led the league in technical fouls. Uh, I mean, I don't, I don't cuss at them. I don't cuss yeah. at them. I, I rarely yell, but I'm very demonstrative with my arms. You know what sure. I mean? They don't like that. Like a few times I got a technical foul and didn't even say anything to them. Didn't even say, I'm just throwing my arms up and they give me a tech. I'm like, I didn't even say anything. They're like, you're yeah. too demonstrative. I don't like it. I'm like, okay, well, now I'm going to say something. <laughs> <laughs> now it's time. Jeez, man. Uh, yeah. So I struggled. I struggled big time with the referees. And then, and then, you know, they're people too. And they're all about relationships and they have, um, uh, they have hidden biases as well. And it's always better to sure. be on people you get more what is it you get more flies with honey than you do with poo you know what i mean something like that yeah um um so so it's better to be nice to people and i really struggled with that this year but i'm gonna work on it i'm gonna get better at it and i told my coaching staff my coaching staff gets on me about it so to answer the question i brought up for a reason to answer the question is i don't feel like i i over coach what i feel like sometimes is i focus too much on the referees and i get out of my coaching and then when I get out of my coaching and I'm just yelling at the referee, like, that's a foul. What are you doing? Uh, whatever I'm saying. You know what I mean? Yeah. Three, four plays go up and down while I'm not doing any coaching. You mm. know, I'm not. And then, and, then, and then those are lost opportunities. Those are lost possessions where I could have calmed the team down, refocused us, reiterated us, called a play, changed the scheme a little bit. But I'm so fixated on the referees. Three, four, five possessions go up and down. Um, and, and sometimes those can cost you a game. Um, so I'm, I'm really trying to get better at that. Like, I feel like that was my biggest weakness this year as a coach. Yeah. Okay. That's interesting. That's a, that's a good perspective too. You, you don't really think about that part of the, you know, as you're focused on the ref, the game is, the game's not stopping. Yeah. It's still going. So that's an interesting, and like you said, missing three or four plays that could have been, you know, that could have benefited from your, from your, uh, your vision, your focus and stuff like that. Right. So that's interesting. Um, and, they, and, they, and they, my team, especially this, this team that I have right now, they really, um, they go as I go. Like when I was hot headed and emotional, they're hot headed and emotional and out of control. When I'm calm and in control, they're calm and in control. So it's all, it was always better when I was calm and in control versus when I was demonstrative and out of control. Yeah. Right. For sure. So I just got two more questions for you, coach, and then we'll get you out of here. I want to be respectful of your time. Uh, you mentioned earlier that you are uh, in the real estate business. So as a professional, as someone who now has a, has a career beyond the court, uh, how much, I guess, what's one thing if you had to, I mean, I'm sure there's plenty of things you could choose, but if you had to choose one thing from your playing days that you felt like you learned from your coaches, you learned from competing that translated and stayed with you off the court into your adult life, what would that one skill be? Easy, easy. Oh, all right. He's ready. Off. Hard work pays off. That's, that's like my mantra. Like I was, never, I was never a five-star athlete. I was never any, I wasn't, I wasn't anything. I wasn't ranked. I wasn't starred. I wasn't recruited. I was nothing. I had to play freshman when I was a freshman, JV when I was a JV, varsity when I was a sophomore, junior. You know what I mean? I had to grind and work my way up. And then I had to grind and work my way up in life. Literally everything I have, I had to earn it. I had to work for it. I started from the bottom. Literally how I got into real estate, I answered a, I answered an ad on Craigslist to be a marketing manager for a real estate firm. I didn't even know it was a real estate firm. Literally started from the bottom. I was making $10 every transaction. And then these other agents, I would get their checks across my desk, $10,000, $5,000, $20,000. I'm sitting here scratching my head. I'm like, I'm in the wrong, I'm in the right field, but I got the wrong job. Yeah. I went, I went from a marketing manager um, to a transition coordinator to, uh, which is the paperwork guys, the TC, they do all the paperwork, um, to a property manager to a real estate agent, to a real estate broker. So I literally wore every single hat in the real estate world. And I, it's so beneficial because when you pay your dues from the ground level up, you understand 
you understand the business, you understand everything as a whole. Like I know the ins and outs, like some agents didn't know the paperwork. I knew all the paperwork. Some agents didn't know how to market themselves. I know how to market myself. Some agents didn't know how to do all, like I got all the tools, you know what I mean? And yeah. It's the same thing with basketball. Like I played at pretty much every level besides the NBA. You know, I played overseas. I played in the ABA. I played JUCO. I played division one. I, I played high school. I played freshman. I played all the levels. You know what I mean? Um, so it, you, it really, like when you internalize something like that, you, you like like I said with Kobe, you you maximize your craft, and that's what that's what I try to do in everything I do. I try to maximize my craft. I try to understand it from the ground up, and I think the best way to do that is to pay your dues. You know what I mean? Hard work, come in and pay your dues. I never I never started on the third lap on the mile. You know what I mean? I all started lap one every time, and and by starting on lap one, you understand the course a little better than the person who only ran one lap. Um, so that's just that's just in my life, and I. And it's funny because I prayed every day. I prayed for the boys to, to show them that their hard work pays off because I told them, work hard, work hard, work hard. It's going to pay off. It's going to pay off. But I'll go home and I'll pray. I was like, God, please let these boys see that their hard work will pay off because it's a slippery slope. And a lot of times when kids work hard, especially with the microwave, instant gratification era that we're in, it's like they don't see that reward. They can quit next year because it's hard. You know, imagine putting in all this hard work and getting nothing out of it. So I prayed and prayed and prayed to show these boys that their hard work is going to pay off. And we ended up getting a championship out of it. Um, we had pretty good success. You know, kids are getting recruited. Like things are going good. Um, so I feel like their hard work is paying off. And I feel like that's a staple or a foundation that can project them in life. Um, if they just follow that same mantra that I followed. Yeah. There's no, there's no secret to it. You got to do the work. Yeah. yeah, man, we can just drop the mic right there. I'm not going to, but I'm, I got one more question for you. Cause I'm interested in your answer for this next one, but that was a, uh... That was awesome, man. I love that answer. Last question for you, coach. Uh, this is the big one. This is the one we like to end with. Obviously, like I said, man, I'm really interested in your answer because of all the connections you have to Sacramento, being from the area, now coaching in the area, all of that, and kind of hearing your heart behind coaching and why you do what you do. Uh, at the end of the day, when it's all said and done, you're at the end of your life and you're looking back, what do you want your legacy to be for here in the hometown of Sacramento? It's a big one, man. That's good. Yeah, that's a good question. That's a good question. But and and before before I got into this coaching, it was easy. My legacy was always my kids. You know what sure. I mean? I had so young. Um, my goal. People tell me what's my life goal. I want to be ahead. I want to be at the head of the dinner table, and I want to have my kids and my grandkids and my great grandkids and the whole generation of our family sitting at the table, and I can see my life's work. That's my life's work right there. Um, because I poured into my kids. I poured into my. I'm going to pour into my grandkids. My kids are going to pour into their kids, and. I didn't have a good family before me, but I'm going to have a good family after me. Um, and, that, and that's one of my goals and that's gonna be my legacy. Um, so that hands down, that's easily my legacy. But now outside of my family, um, I have visions, I have goals, I have dreams. Swapper was at Sac High for like 20 years, you know, and he changed hundreds and hundreds of kids' lives. He sent hundreds of kids to college. He got hundreds of kids scholarships. Um, his, his legacy in that community is unmatched and untouched. and that's my goal is to go touch that legacy. You know what I mean? Like that's, yeah. that's, he, he, he rolls the bar. That's the marker. Derek Swafford is the marker for what he accomplished for this community, for this city. Um, he is the marker. And, you know, they say reach for the, reach for the moon and you land amongst the stars or something like that. Like that's what I'm trying to do because I don't think you get any higher as far, as far as high school coaches, especially at Sac High than a Derek Swafford. Um, so if I can do half of what he did, you know, if I can stay here for 10 years and send 50 kids to college, I'll be extremely happy with what I've done here. Um, but between those two pillars, I think that'll be a pretty good legacy for me. And I want to write a book. My book will be my legacy too. My tell-all book about Ooh. my life. Yeah, that'll be my legacy as well. So those three things. Yeah. <laughs> Dang, wait, man. It's, you have to come back to the podcast when you drop that book. Yeah, well, I'm writing it. I'm writing it, but I, it's taken a while because I always feel like I got to, like people want to hear from a winner. You know what I mean? So I got to be a winner and I don't feel like I'm a winner yet. Because I don't know yet. That's just how I feel. But it's in the process. Oh, that's that's but, interesting. Yeah. I always I always make a joke, say, I got to go win Big Brother. Or I got to win the amazing race. And then people will read my book. Um, <laughs> I don't know if winning a section championship is good enough, but maybe. <laughs> so, hey, it, it, it would be for here, us here in Sacramento, man. I like that. Yeah. That's, again, that's where that, that kind of that Kobe mentality comes in, right? That mama yeah. mentality is just like, you know, you could do it now. Anybody could do it now, but you want it to really mean something when you do it. So I can appreciate right. that. Well, well it's, sorry, it's it's twofold though because on one on one side it's like if my book changes one person's life, it's worth writing. You know sure. what I mean? Sure. And then on the other side is I know I have potential to change more than one person's life. So let's maybe 
timing is important. Yeah. <laughs> oh, dude, hundred yeah. percent. That's it. Like, I have never heard that before, but that's good. Cause usually people stop when they say, if I can just change one life, that's it's worth it. And usually they stop right there. Yeah. But the fact that you followed up with, but I know I can change more. I like that. That's really good. See, man, coaches is dropping, like you said, <laughs> little nuggets on this podcast. You're making my life easy coach. When I have to clip this for, for promo clips, it's going to make my life easier. Easy and difficult. Easy because I'll have plenty of options. Difficult because like, which ones do I choose? So I appreciate you for that, man. Hey, let me ask you this. I I lied. I got one more question for you. And and it just popped in my head. I used to do uh, this character combine podcast with uh, a friend of mine and um, very similar to this, you know, coaches and athletes. But one of the, we used to do some warm up questions. And one of the questions that she used to ask, that was kind of her staple question was if you had a, if you had to choose a life song, now it can either be a song that you feel is is uh, representative of your entire life or maybe where you're at right now. If there's a certain song that you feel that you're just feeling right now and it's the one that, you know, if I had to describe my life right now, this is the one song I would choose. What would your life song be? And then we'll get you out of here. Well, I like, so, okay. My daughter's going to be so mad, but Uh when I was was 15, 16 years old and I'm having a kid, um, that song by Will Smith, just the two of us where he dedicated it to his son and he, Oh yeah. They told that whole song explains how to be a father. You sure. know what I mean? It, it yeah. tells you what you need to do to be a father. I listened to that song on repeat over and over and over and over again. Um, and I hate it. I hate that it's called just the two of us. And my daughter hates it too, because now I have two kids and, and it can't be just the two of us, <laughs> two of us. but it doesn't matter because yeah. I'm talking about yeah. those gems that Will Smith dropped and all those songs. Um, and then I just, I literally live by it. I literally live by it today. Like any, 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 any phrase, any, any, lyrics he has in there like it still applies to this day and that song is what 20 years old now mm-hmm. um, it still applies to this day um so because I'm, I'm still a father first you know even outside of sure. basketball outside of everything i'm still a father first and i always think about my kids I always think about my family um but i just feel like that's always been my life song because i mean i've been a father longer than i've been a man you know i've been a dad longer than i've been a man i've been yeah. a dad longer than i've been anything in this world so I'm, i am that to my core like so any, any song that I have has to be family oriented. It has to be about my kids, how about my family. Yeah. There we go. That's a good way to end this thing. Coach, uh, where can they follow you on social media? If you want them to, if you want them to follow you yeah. on social media, um, where can they follow you? Where can they follow your team's page? All those things. Um, I'm, I'm Matt Johnson, 916 on any platform. Pretty easy to find. Um, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. I don't have the other stuff, the TikToks and the Snapchats. Um, sack you're high. smart. I have to do it, yeah. but you're a smart coach. <laughs> Stay away. <laughs> um, at at Sack High Basketball on um, Instagram and then Sack High Basketball Club on Twitter. Um, you'll follow us all there. We appreciate the support. We actually have a fundraising program going on right now to help um, re- rejuvenate, re- renovate the team locker room. Um, it's oh, cool. Same room. Yeah, same locker room since I've been there 20 years ago. It needs some touch up, at least some paint. We're at least asking for some paint or something. Um, so we have a GoFundMe right now and it's, it's a link in my bio. Um, anything okay. helps, whether it be a share, whether it be um a dollar anything helps um we we're just on ksfm 102.5 the radio we we're talking about that as well um the gofundme so we're, we're trying to bring back some positivity to the community and anything helps whether you guys come to a game whether you guys share whether you guys speak the word whether you have me on your podcast um, anything you guys can do to help we greatly appreciate it awesome yes go check that out go follow coach and his team and the gofundme page and if you if you feel uh led to to donate definitely do that and, and help support an awesome cause and uh coach man we appreciate your time thank you so much for taking some time to have a have a conversation and uh good luck with this upcoming season let's try to get another banner up there yes sir thank you it was fun man i appreciate you it wasn't even that nervous wrecking it wasn't even that nerve wrecking so i appreciate you man thank you for having me on the show hey man i try my best to make our guests feel comfortable so i'm glad you felt that man so thank you so much and good luck with everything (laughs) 